It's important to study history um, so, so that you don't get complacent about your own time, so that you realize that, that some of the issues and, and some of the issues that you're facing um, have been presenting themselves uh, to people your age earlier on in time um, with, with different uh, um, ways of dealing with them, of course, uh, slightly different choices, but in many cases the same issues. So a lot of what we're facing today is not new uh, and, and it helps you uh, be aware of the complexity of, of society, of culture, of, of issues of, of citizenship, of choices, um, and that's, th those are reasons why studying history is, is important, uh, apart from being fun. Welcome to Fort's Camera Action. So, I came across a really disturbing photograph today with an equally disturbing caption. And upon seeing this photo, I thought, hmm, let me investigate the story behind the photograph because I wasn't really acquainted with the incident. It was quite deep and quite surreal. So I thought I put a short mini compilation documentary together so that these individuals who went through this devastating and traumatic ordeal could have their voices heard. And as always, provoking for. It is a piece of Arkansas past, but you won't find it in most history books. It is one of the state's worst fires on record. Fifty years ago, the dormitory at Arkansas's Negro Boys Industrial School in Wrightsville caught fire. Forty-eight boys narrowly escaped. Twenty-one others didn't. We have over 30 years now, and when I saw this on television, it was actually the first time that I heard anything about it. Fifty years ago, 21 boys ages 13 through 17 were killed um, in what is described as the worst tragedy of any kind in Arkansas history. Don, the boys who died in the fire were ages 13 to 17 years old. Many people in Arkansas haven't heard about this tragedy and one mother and documentary filmmaker hope to change that. I feel that each young man should have his own individual marker that represents him, his name, and everything. Each one should have their own. Now, as far as the, the, the other marker, which was the memorial, I also feel that they should have a memorial every year, just like the Little Rock Nine. I feel they should honor these, these boys every year. In a memorial service. In a memorial service, and they should also have a memorial spot, ground, whatever you, however you say it. Yes, ma'am. They need a, they need their own, they just need it. You know, they just need it because it just seems, I don't know, the fire just don't, don't seem right. They, you know, they, like you said, their lives were, were taken. They were young, you know, and they just took them and just put them out there and just left them out there. And that was the feeling I had and that. And that is it. Mm -hmm. And that's what got me. 
you know, and I said, if we work with Marcus and these boys don't have no, nobody can go out there and see that this is their, this is where they lay, this is where they're at, that's not good. Everybody should have a marker. We had a customer from Pine Bluff. She, we, Tony, Mr. Nibbler's son, did a French poodle monument. She bought her French poodle a granite monument with a vase on it. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what froze you? Was it just the story, the horrific nature of it? The horrific nature of knowing that it was 21 young men that were burned in Riceville and they, seven, 14, don't have monuments, no recognition, no memorial, nothing. No, no nothing, you know? That, that's what got me. How old were you? 16? 15. 15? Do you remember much of it? Yeah. When we get out of it. Were you in the dorm? And one, so you were one of the kids in there. So can you just sort of tell me what you do remember about that night? He had some, she liked them wires out there, the fence there. He had a big old thick screen they made just like that, on the inside and outside. Uh-huh. They had the 16 penny nails through them, and they weren't easy to come off. Right. So you had to pull one from the inside, when you got that through, you had to get the outside ones through. Oh, so they were both in and out. Mm-hmm. And the door just entered to it. It was locked. So, Couldn't get out the door. Two doors. It was one door. One, one door in that way. One, one door. door. And it's locked from the outside. Right. A fire breaks out at the Arkansas Negro Boys Industrial School, but the only doors are locked. 48 children escape, 21 die. They said they found bodies piled in corners or in situations where they were trying to get out. Arkansas's Secret Holocaust, Monday at 10. Each headstone tells a story. Some come here to grieve, but Lavina Lawrence has come for answers. There ain't no way in the world they could get out. Lawrence's son, Lindsey Cross, died 49 years ago in one of Arkansas's worst fires on record. But he didn't give me a bit of trouble. Sweet as he could be. Sure was. But trouble found Cross. At 15, he was accused of stealing, and a judge sentenced him to time at Arkansas's Negro Boys Industrial School in Wrightsville, a state-run school for teen boys convicted of minor offenses. He was a nice boy. He was just kind of easy to be persuaded by other kids, you know. March 5th, 1959, before dawn, the dormitory at the school caught fire. The two doors leading out of the room locked. You uh, were quoted in the paper as seeing someone try to get through. That's, that's what messed it up. When he went up through there and tried to kick that dough in. See, that's when they're firing all that smoke coming, shooting at most of them. So we got out the window then, about the time we had the window. So he, this other person, Jesse, was able to actually kick the door in well, to get out, or? Um, I'll put it this way. When you're a little bit frightened there, you know, you know, right. it's tough. So the door came open, but that's when the fire was coming this way toward us. That's what that happened. So the door came. Well, we come in and out of it. See, mm -hmm. there's one about the outside there. Because when anybody pulled up in there, it wasn't there. Right. Yeah. I don't know if he was uh, in Pan Blood where he stayed at or what. Right, right. So that's why I come. So, Jesse, I want to make sure I understand you. Was he, did he, did the door cave in on him because of the fire? Or did he actually? Yeah, no, he tried to go through the fire. Go. He tried to go through the mm -hmm. fire. Till the fire kind of lit him up and he made a retreat. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So he ran to the door. He figured he through could go the fire. He, he thought, thought he could go, go that, way. that way. And he started kicking at the door. And the door came open. I don't know how many were there with him, but he was there. So the door did come open at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's when all the fire and all the smoke picked up. Well, I didn't understand what he meant. He said, he had a nose lock. So I guess that's what he was telling me. They had the, the two doors locked between them. Newspaper interviews reveal witness testimonies. One survivor said he saw clusters of children fighting to get out of the window. 48 boys escaped by forcing metal screens off two windows, but 21 others died. 14 of them found stacked on top of each other at the southwest corner of the dorm, burned beyond recognition. Do you remember where the fire started? In the chapel. Well, it's what you say, they call it the chapel. It was in the front. You think the start, fire started in the front? Not in the dorm room itself. Well, it, it's done with me just like the, these uh, old penitentiary camps was here on that cup here. Made on a U. Right. And that's where it was right there. That's what you call the front. You come in the front of it. It's like this here. We was here. You got another side over here. Right. Right here where the pole. You got a big pot of, big pot belly stove. Right. Sitting right there. Right. You see that part where it got overheated, whatever. I ain't gonna see how it started, whatever. There was a boys industrial school and it was primarily for African-American youth and actually we're talking about the Jim Crow era. So there was segregation. These 69 boys were locked into their dormitory and the building mysteriously caught fire. They were burning and hugging. You could smell the burning of the bodies. They were bringing bodies out. They were bringing pieces out. There were no adults on the premises and there were no keys to unlock the door. Why did we ever hear anything about this? The horrific nature of 21 boys being burned alive in a holocaustic fashion just caused folk to want to cover it up. I had put it out of my mind that he was someplace else. People have tried to get away from pain. That's a painful thought. I pushed it in the back of my mind and just kind of got away from it. He went somewhere and he got amnesia and don't know his way back home. That's how I was feeling. So the room was full of smoke, smoke it, but which is why you had to count the beds to you to find your way you to, to count the window. And, to count it and lay low. And lay low. Back, that's right. So it was, right. it was eight beds up right there. You had to count. But if you didn't, you over count or under count, you didn't have number one window. It was open. The rest of them still had them thick wires and things on. I'm just trying to help my child. He dead and can't help himself. I'm trying to do the best I can. That's all I can do. Through the years, the cemetery has had several owners. And without a headstone, the new groundskeeper, Sam Jarvis, can only estimate where the bodies are. Measured uh, where graves are here and, and determined that this was, I hope, the actual spot where it starts here and measure down to where the other graves come out over this way. You, know, you guys may be able, if you choose to, uh, help in the production of it because it has a personal significance to me. Uh, it's also a story that needs to be told. Frank Lawrence has invited UALR film students to help him with the documentary, Arkansas Secret Holocaust, about the children who died in the Wrightsville Boys Industrial Fire, including his big brother, Lindsey Cross. It's certainly not designed to indict Jim Crow. It's certainly not designed to put blame or to make a negative kind of a, uh, a statement about the state that I was born in, raised in, and loved very dearly. Mr. Austin, right, was the one who was supposed to be staying here because the other guy was sick. Yeah, Mr. Back, Mr. Austin, right here, when you come in, Right to your left mm -hmm. uh -huh. was the house right there beside the, right, the road. Right, right. That's where most of stayed. He said he was in here when the lights started flickering. And that he ran home to get a flashlight. Right. Because it went dark. Do you remember lights flickering? 
thing I know is it's, it's that red hot blazing fire. Right. That's all I remember. because I, if I say I'll be lying, if I say you understand, yeah, I'll still be like me might be telling the truth. Uh, but closure needs to be obtained because you've got 21 boys who, for all intents and purposes, have just been forgotten. Nearly 50 years later, the land where the industrial school stood now houses an Arkansas Department of Corrections men's boot camp. There aren't any plaques or markings to indicate that the Arkansas Boys Industrial School was ever here. But the 21 children who died have not been forgotten. In fact, the people we spoke to say the story of the fire has been passed on for years. It's almost become like a folklore. But as for the specific details surrounding the tragic event, those are harder to come by. At the request of then-Governor Orville Faubus, a committee investigated the fire and found the school, the state, and the community responsible for the children's death. But it didn't recommend a punishment, and somehow the story faded into the backdrop of the civil rights movement. History and time both can cure any problem that you have, but unfortunately, uh, history is the only one of those two that can repeat itself. Frank Lawrence hopes his documentary will answer his and his mother's questions and help keep the history of the Wrightsville fire from repeating itself. The Lawrence family isn't convinced Lindsey Cross or any of the other boys who died in the fire were actually ever buried at Haven Rest Cemetery. They say authorities wouldn't allow anyone to see the bodies, so they plan to ask the courts for an excavation. The black community was in such horrific fear, the story just vanished. Mm. Sounds like that old thing of sweeping under the carpet sounds like this. Thank you for watching False Camera Action. Before you go anywhere, don't forget to click subscribe.